as as a part of the EMU initiative. And I thought that was really uh, a, very insightful to be able, particularly in advance of September 17th, uh, to be able to involve the student body. And uh, here, here you come uh, and you already have a meeting set. Bless you. <laughs> well, we don't have a meet, we don't have a meeting set, but we will be, uh, I will be in direct contact with him um, oh, so very soon. So, okay. Good stuff. Good yep. stuff. Hey, Harvey. Hey, Susan. Hey, Trey. Welcome. <laughs> Hello, everybody. <laughs> <laughs> so that's all good stuff. Thank you, Pat, for bringing that up and Lois. Uh, so I'm going to jump in. Uh, and we'll go through the agenda and we'll, um, some of it is just a review, uh, but again, this is being recorded. So for, for, uh, anyone who can't make it now, all this stuff will be on video and we'll post it as quickly as we can. Um, all the other, uh, meetings have been posted on our YouTube uh, page. So, um, a general review, uh, I'll just go through this quickly because you all know this, um, and for those of you who are tuning in, this information is available at our website at loveistheanswermovement.com on the uh, Love is the Answer Day page under the events tab. Um, so the day, uh, of course, is September 17th. It'll be the third annual Love is the Answer Day. Uh, this year, we're going to be painting murals all over the country and hopefully all over the world. We have a goal of one mural at least in each state. Uh, one for each U.S. territory and at least one on every continent, yes, including Antarctica. And now uh, we've begun the process of reaching out to um, research facilities there to try to find one that would like to have some fun with us on that day. Uh, painting an indoor mural, of course, in Antarctica. Um, so, uh, and of course, uh, love is the answer. For those of you who don't know, uh, love is, uh, is a, an acronym for learning about others, opening our hearts to their needs, volunteering ourselves to be part of the solution in their life, and empowering others to do the same. And these murals are going to be a representation of that. Uh, the whole point is to get members of the community together, uh, people who uh, may not know each other, people from various walks of life, peace officers and veterans and returning citizens and students and CEOs and mayors and teachers and you name it, you know, um, folks who uh, will come out, put a paintbrush in their hand and help uh, to create a work of art that will bless the community, showing love being put into action. And uh, it'll be symbolic, you know, but um, It'll also be inspiring for many, many days and weeks and months and years afterwards as people see that. And uh, for those who, re who participate, uh, will remember that day. And it'll be a reminder uh, that uh, when we come together, great and beautiful things can happen, right? Um, so this is a show of unity. Uh, this is our first global event. And uh, the hope is that, um, you know, we can all inspire each other. I can't wait to see the murals in, in uh, North Dakota, Hawaii, and Washington, D.C., and places like, who knows, Peru, uh, Russia, who, who knows where else, right? Um, so uh, this, this is really going to be a living piece of art, you know, something that will bring people together from all over. We need that. We need that right now. We need love more than anything. So um, people can learn more at loveistheanswermovement.com. As I said, go to the, um, the events tab and you'll see Love is the Answer Day. Um, you can sign up to participate on a local committee. And that's one of the things that we're, uh, that we're really, really trying to get done right now is, is to get people to sign up. Uh, and there is a uh, place on that page on the website where you can do that. Um, and then we have these meetings every Friday, uh, 10 a.m. Pacific, 1 p.m. Eastern for uh, one hour where we just touch base, um, give updates, ask questions, and so forth. Um, so uh, 
I don't know if you all can see the agenda. I'm going to repost it because I, I think if you came on after I posted, you won't see it. So I'm going to take a second just to do that. And then if you all want to open your mics up while I'm doing that and just say hello to each other, um, that'd be cool. So how is everyone? Harvey, how you doing? Had lunch at the bomber with my friends in Ypsilanti. There's a lot of rain getting over to your side of town. Hey, I know. Tell me about it. I've been listening to it all morning long. I'm just hoping that people that got flooded a couple of weeks ago aren't having problems now. I, I shudder at that. Did anybody see the, on the news the floods in Germany? Oh, my gosh. Well, no, I haven't seen them. No. Oh, heartbreaking. Heartbreaking. I think there are 100 people dead so far from the floods last time I checked. 100 people dead and 1,500 people unaccounted for. Oh, oh for God. heaven's sake. What kind of rain did they have? I don't know. And it's still raining. They were expect when I, the news that I saw, they were, it had rain had let up and Unfortunately, some people had gone back to their homes and homes were collapsing from the water. They were just, and mm. because the uh, people had been taken out, but then because it stopped raining, they thought they could go back. So now they're having to go back and try to get them out again. It's, um, it's not nice, oh. not a pretty picture at all. Mm. Mm. We definitely need to keep them in our thoughts and prayers. And Yes, most definitely. Well, I think I heard one quote, somebody saying it was three months worth of rain in a day. I think I heard that too. Yes. Mm. That's a lot of rain. That is. Um, you know, when I, when I hear about things like that, and, and, you know, the recent tragedy in Florida with the building collapsing and other things, I, you know, I think, um, you know, just two things really how important it is for us to have community, right? You know, for us to um, put in the time to build into each other for moments such as this, right? Because that, that kind of thing can happen in various forms anywhere at any time, right? True. Um, I mean, here in Vegas, we were out of town, but I think the temperature spiked to like 120 degrees. And I know recently in, uh, was it Chicago where there was a, a heat wave? Uh, no, 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 Portland and Seattle area. Right. And a lot of people died um, because right. of that. Um, they're not used to that, that kind of heat. Um, and so I think you know, I think about what love is the answer is going to look like 10 years from now or 20 years from now. And I'm really hoping that we will have built up a, a network solid enough for us to be able to respond, you know, as a group, right? Um, to be able to raise money, to be able to raise resources, to be able to, you know, mobilize people when things like this happen. And, um, you know, you, you all know who are on here now that we have a much greater mission, a much bigger mission than just police community relations. That's how it started. But um, the vision for Love is the Answer really is about uh, equipping people so that they can come together and respond when things like that happen. Like, I wish we had, I wish we had, you know, 10,000 Love is the Answer movement members in Germany right now. Yes. Yeah who could mobilize and, you know, wrap their arms around those, those families that are hurting right now. So that's, you know, that's part of the vision. And for now we can, you know, we, we can pray, but hopefully we can build, uh, build something special that can respond to, you know, to things like this, not to, not to take the place of the Red Cross or any other groups out there just to come alongside, you know, and, and be part of the solution. So, um, I want to look at number five on the um, agenda, which is uh, the need for volunteers to recruit leaders. Uh, and Pat kind of kicked us off with that, with the discussion about uh, 
uh, EMU and Lois, uh, thanks for, you know, letting us know that you're going to have that meeting with Lewis and Colton soon. Um, so we, so we're looking for exactly things like that with, with you know, what Pat brought up, um, identifying leaders, identifying people who can come in and be part of this. So wherever you are, um, wherever you're, you know, you are now looking at this video, um, if you, if you know of someone in your state, or another state or another country that you think might be interested in participating in Love is the Answer Day, um, you know, please have them uh, check us out. Come to the website, uh, see the information, sign up, and you know, participate in some way. Even if you don't know how you're going to participate, if you have the desire to uh, to help, we'll find a role for you in your local community. So um, I'm going to be just so you know. The bulk of my time in the coming week is going to be spent doing just that, reaching out. Um, I'm pretty much putting everything else aside except for a couple of meetings that I have lined up. And for, I don't know, six or seven hours a day, I'm going to be calling people. I'm going to be wearing out the phone and I'm going to be connecting with folks and saying, hey, we, um, we need you. We need you on September 17th and here's what's going on and here's how I'd like to, you to participate. I don't expect anyone else to do six or seven hours a day because this is this is what I do every day, right? So this is my job. Um, but if uh, everyone else would just think of one or two or five people uh, that can that can join uh, the movement in some way, that would be dynamite. And to invite them, especially especially leaders, especially people who are influencers in the community and you know have the ability to um, to also pick up the phone and reach out to people. Any you thoughts know, before? Yeah, yeah it occurred to me a, a couple days ago and occurred again this morning. Uh, I don't know if anybody knows Chief James Cray, but what a marvelous person he is and what, what an interesting uh, connection that might be to the Detroit community. Lois, do you know Chief Cray? I don't. Harvey, do you know Chief Kirk? Now, is he, the leave, is he the chief that's leaving or the chief that's coming in? He's the chief that's leaving, but he's uh, announcing probably this coming week a run for the governor of the state of Michigan. And he's just highly respected in uh, uh, the Detroit community and was extremely effective. Uh, and uh, he'll be sorely missed as police chief in the city of Detroit, but uh, I'm wondering if he might not have an, uh, an incentive to collaborate because of an interest in running for governor and a, an interest in building even a larger statewide presence than he has. I don't know him at all, uh, but it would be interesting if somebody did uh, to see if there would be a potential connection there. I don't know. What do you think about that, Lois? Um, okay, I'm trying to answer a, a chat. <laughs> uh, I don't do well with, I don't do well with. <laughs> I'm, all right. I'm following the screen and chatting at the same time. Um, that was my fault, that, sorry. That, that, <laughs> no, no problem. No problem. Um, that might be something, somebody that if somebody knows him. Now, one of the things that I'm going, I'm working on, and Harvey's a part of this group too, so he can help me. I'm hoping that we can get a showing of the film for We Rock and bring in Moses out of Detroit. And Moses, I don't know, uh, Pat, if you're familiar with We Rock. We Rock is an affiliate of Moses and ultimately affili an affiliate of Gamaliel uh, organizing group out of Chicago. And Gamaliel is the group that President um, Obama worked for as a community organizer. Hmm. And so uh, we have a very vibrant group here and i we uh harvey i believe we rock has been around getting close to 10 years now if i'm not mistaken or maybe a little more 
But anyway, um, want to arrange a viewing with We Rock and Moses out of Detroit. And it might very well be that as if when I talked to Poncella, she might recommend including the other Gamaliel groups here in the state. There's, a, uh, there's Action Lansing, and then there's Isaiah, oh gosh, and uh, might be Kalamazoo. And then we have, there's three or four other uh, Gamaliel groups in the state. So if uh, I want, I do know that one of our leaders here in, at We Rock, and We Rock stands for Washington Regional Organizing a Coalition. And mm -hmm. uh, at least one of our leaders, uh, Tad Weiser has seen uh, the film. So I don't think it'll be any, um, and I think Jeff, I think another one of our leaders, uh, Pastor Jeffrey Harrell, also has seen the film. So I think that we can pull it in and uh, possibly have a community meeting, including the other We Rock groups here. So uh, one of somebody out of that group might know um, um, Police Chief Craig, James Craig. I don't know anybody that knows him, Pat, directly. I don't either. And if the thought occurs, it's not beyond the possibility that Don might have an acquaintance with him because of his longstanding relationships in social work um, throughout Southeastern Michigan. So that might be a question yeah. I could Don as well. Uh, that could just, be, yes. Yeah. Could be. But a, uh, <laughs> AJ, what I really wanted to uh, say is, and we can talk about this later, I would really love for us to, uh, I have um, family in Trinidad. I have an East End. Um, um, I lived there for seven years. And this um, particular pastor and family that I'm talking about, um, it's an East Indian uh, pastor, a very mixed church. And uh, like I said, we, we became family. Um, to have a viewing with them, I hit um, the wife and I. We we are we back and forth on WhatsApp. So haven't talked to him, but he knows me well enough to tell me. You know, <laughs> I was joking with someone. I the last time I hadn't been there in probably twenty years, and I went, and my hair all the time that I was there, I wore color in my hair, and when I went back after twenty years, I my hair was gray. And his wife was going to the hairdresser right across the street. And I said, oh, I'll walk all over with you. And under his breath, as he swept the, the um, oh gosh, the, the galley, the whatever we, they called it. It wasn't, the, it, there, there was no grass, it was the yard. But so he was sweeping and under his breath, he says, and don't come back without color. <laughs> <laughs> That's family, isn't it? <laughs> Yeah. So I got rid of I, that's been, that was in fourteen. So I haven't been graced before, except during except during the pandemic. I refuse. I'm not doing that. One. I'm in the that house. Is but family. It is. But would love to uh, set up a time, and I'll get with you and Nat on that uh, to see if we can set up a time for a uh, viewing for them, and that would give us a a contact there and. This particular pastor, um, if we were in a conference or convention, he was going to make sure that he spoke to every single pastor that was there That's before great. it was over. So he would be one that would reach out and include others. That is awesome. Yeah, okay. that would be that would be great. Let's work on that. Okay. All right. Yeah. <laughs> okay. <laughs> All right. So. Um, so so we're we're good on the on on the, the volunteers to recruit leaders we get the we get the the gist of that let's uh let's keep on doing that work keep on reaching out um sponsors same thing same kind of thing we're looking for local sponsors to donate uh supplies and um and help promote you know we're looking for regional sponsors looking for national sponsors in the u.s 
We're looking for global sponsors for any of those multinational firms that are out there. And for a company, if you're looking at this uh, and you're a multinational organization, what a great opportunity it would be to have a global team building event, right? And, and have your team members. I'm going to be talking to Marsh, uh, uh, one of our supporting companies about this uh, in detail. And we'll be talking with other companies about it, but uh, wouldn't it be great to have your team members from all over the world participating in this day. And you know, for local companies, same thing, right? If you have a, a 10 person shop or a two person shop, um, you know, shut down for a half a day and come on out and help paint a mural and uh, build into the community. So let's think about things like that as sponsors. And of course, we're looking for cash sponsors as well to keep the wheels moving so we can promote more, we can get more books out to people, get more, uh, just more people involved. Uh, in AJ, do you know anyone at um, Coca-Cola? Um, I have a I have a couple of LinkedIn contacts, but um, no one that I you know really have real relationship with. Okay, I have a friend. I I well, a family member, um, kind of a distant cousin but um, we acknowledge each other. We're close enough for that. That has um, know someone in the Atlanta office. And you know, Coca-Cola is a big sponsor of uh, the Essence Festival. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, and I don't know if, I, maybe if I can set up a meeting with you, get you to meet Pat and I'll let you make the pitch. Um, oh gosh, I can't even think of her name that that works there at Coca Cola. Okay, I think it would well, be good also to reach out to uh, the Divine Nine. Yeah, are you you're a member, right? Right, I'm a Delta. Yeah, you're a Delta. Okay, mm -hmm. would would you would you feel comfortable doing that? I can, uh, I will, okay, were you there when we showed the film to our so, local social action committee? I've been, start, I asked them then to set up a showing for the Divine Nine here in Washtenaw County, and that hasn't gone anywhere yet. I will try to go back and, and address that with them and see if we can get that going. And I don't, uh, I'm not, I don't meet with the Panhellenic group. There's someone else that does, but I can see if we can get get something. Okay. Okay. Great. Yeah, that would be awesome. That would be awesome. That that um, that is actually something that I've I've wanted to happen uh, for a, a while now. So if we could get, kind of get the wheels turning on that, that'd be awesome. Yeah. Um, you know, some some people. Um, feel like they have to make a, I don't know, a decision of what side to be on. And I've found, I've actually talked with a couple of people that are involved with the Divine Nine at a high level. And I won't say their names, but these particular, these particular people um, really didn't want to have anything to do with police. Um, so they, they took a very kind of, you know, hardcore um, Black Lives Matter stance, right, of, you know, we're, we're, we're not going to hold hands with them. We're not going to do things with them. We just want to shut them down. And of course, that's not us, right? Love is the answer is about building bridges and bringing people together, finding common ground. So we just have to find the, the right folks within the Divine Nine that, that have that, that have that same spirit, you know, about them. I, um, so I, I had talks, they didn't go anywhere because of that, right? And, and that's, and there's, you know, there's people on, on one side or another, and then there's a lot of people in the middle. We want right. to find those people who are in the middle. Right, right. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Yeah. All right. Um, media, same thing as, as sponsors. We're looking for media. And um, uh, I really believe that we're going to get a lot of local coverage, which is going to be great because every time we do a uh, like the, the, the unveiling of the first garden, 
uh, a lot of the events that have taken place with Susan in Bucks County, um, good media attention. And, and usually when we have gatherings of any kind, uh, we haven't had a lot of physical gatherings, of course, because of COVID, but pre-COVID, we got press at just about every local event. So I think um, we, we will get a lot of good local press. And one of the things we have to do is just keep in mind that they need advance notice and they, you know, they, they want to be part of some of them even want to be part of the roll up. So um, if we have media contacts in whatever area we're in, let's let them know, you know, about this and let's invite them to be a media partner in the, in not only the day of the event, but also the development uh, of it. And some of them will come on. Um, okay. So number eight, we're looking for, um, we're looking for school art classes. We're looking for art schools. Um, we're looking for any art related program, nonprofits, government sponsored, whatever. Um, because uh, if folks are already in a space where they're, they're painting or doing some kind of other art, they might be more inclined to come out and participate in the mural. So just a thought. Um, and then uh, I'll do one more and then I'll stop. Public spaces. Um, we're looking for uh, public spaces where we can do these murals. They'll need approvals and permits. Um, and we're looking for private spaces uh, where we can do these and they'll, they'll need approval, not necessarily a permit. And I'm gonna show you a quick example and then I'll be quiet for a minute. I'm gonna share my screen. I'm gonna go to uh, some photos here. Can y'all see that? Yes, thanks. Okay, cool. So, so that is um, the gate to a garden that is owned by a coffee shop. And Jane and I were there in Santa Barbara this week, and we we got invited to this coffee shop garden space. And so the coffee shop is on one side of the road, and the garden is on the other. And the really cool thing about it, and we're going to be talking with the owner of this place, is that there's a building on this in this garden that is the owner of the coffee shop's art studio. Mm. And it's so it's so cool and the, the the really cool thing backstory is that the young lady who invited jane and i to go have coffee with her um she didn't know about our our love garden program or the mural painting she just said she just found a spot for us to meet because i said i want to meet outdoors because i'm not meeting indoors right now so she she invited us here and i, I took one look at this place i'm like wow this is the prototypical love garden that we want to have done. And I'm just going to show you a quick, I'm going to go through some of the photos real quick, if it'll let me. Oh, there we go. See that? Raised beds. Oh, oh, beautiful. Yeah, this space is like, I guess I, if I could guess, maybe a, maybe a hundred feet by a hundred feet. So like a thousand square feet. Might be more, I don't know. Um, no, that that'd be ten thousand. Like, that sounds yeah, larger be, than a football field. <laughs> no, so about yeah, about a hundred by a hundred. So that's that's about a thousand square feet. Um, so look at that. that's that's her. That's Ashley. That's the young lady who invited us to to have coffee and all the tables and you see the you know people kind of hanging out. There's Wi-Fi there. Um, what just, a perfect campus project. Yeah, yeah, and look at oh that. My. See the gray wall there uh, on that yeah. building. Uh -huh. So that's, I don't know if she's going to do it or not. We're going to ask her if we can, you know, do a love is the answer mural there. But there are spaces like this in cities all over America and all over the world where, there, you know, somebody owns it and they might be willing to say, hey, yeah, sure. You can do a love is the answer mural here. I mean, if, if she, if she does or doesn't, I'm, I'm going to ask, but if she does, it'll be a great great thing and if she doesn't we'll find another spot but look at that there's a little stage there wow uh, yes so that just, somewhat just, reminds me of cultivate coffee house uh, here in uh ypsilanti although it's they don't have the garden but they do well they don't it's not like that but it is a coffee house and uh they have an open area like that it's uh both coffee and beer yeah Oh, very cool. Very cool. Yeah, they so special on Fox 2 uh, this week earlier. Uh, Fox 2 Detroit is a local TV channel. And uh, they were converting unused parking lots 
into garden spaces. And I'm wondering, I don't know who is coordinating that, but I'm wondering if that isn't an opportunity to collaborate and right. not share the message, but also to stimulate people to participate with a purpose. Yeah. Yes. yes. Pat, Pat, would you mind looking into that? I, I would be happy to. Uh, uh, I don't know what he won at Fox 2 Detroit, but I will uh, go back in and, and pull out that particular uh, presentation and see if I can get a connection uh, through Fox 2 back to the person who's organizing the parking lot gardens, community gardens. So that would be neat. And they would be a perfect uh, uh, media group uh, to to cover activities because they are entirely local. Uh, they have a Fox Network connection as a feed, but all of the programming is local programming. Wow. And they really reach out to communities in the area, cover local festivals, cover local businesses. So I think this would be pretty much right up their alley. Uh, yeah, I, it'd yeah, be interesting sure. to try and connect with somebody and see if we could uh, link with a showing. I, I don't know how that would work. I don't know anybody, but I'm certainly not afraid to reach out and ask. <laughs> you know what? Um, that all reminds me that there is a, a black owned TV station in Highland Park, Michigan. Oh. And um, back right after I became mayor, they did an interview with me there at the station. I do know, I did meet the owner and all that day, but I do uh, uh, remember the, the reporter that did, um, or the guy that did the interview with me. So if we would wanna maybe reach out to them and see if we could do a film viewing there, I don't know if that's, something you would want to do it would be you know for them to do a, a viewing a film showing on the station yeah that's something we can discuss okay yeah. so we well we'll see. talk about it okay okay how, how does that work aj with respect to the licensing uh what would be involved if because what Lois is talking about, I think I understand, is actually showing it on the air. Mm -hmm. right. Yeah, so any uh, anything like that, any broadcast uh, activities, we, we would handle on a case-by-case, -case, and they would all have to be done, uh, you know, of course, with, with, with our approval, blessing, contracts, things like that. We're really strict on... Um, on on broadcast showings of the film, uh, we and we di and we don't allow social media um, broadcasting of the film. So so it's uh, if someone is interested from a network, local network, we would just have a talk with them and 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 work it out. Yeah. yeah. At Fox we're, Two, I was we're thinking of having one for their personnel. Yeah. 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 That could be as well, yeah. Something that's not broadcast, but but uh, just for their Within. just for their mm -hmm. yeah, that could work as well. Yeah. And wondering if they would then be likely to cover events if they were familiar with the program and the message that perhaps yeah. they would be interested in coming out and covering September seventeenth or. Uh, covering yeah. individual events like the Love Garden events. Yeah, yeah. And th they've been actually Fox around the country, the local affiliates have actually been really responsive. They, they've been coming out more than anyone else. I, and I don't know why, um, but you know, it's been good coverage. We've been getting really good coverage from Fox affiliates around the country. So I'm happy with that. Yeah, and any opportunity to engage deeper with, with them um, is good. Yeah, it, do you have uh, uh, 
a couple of cities that where Fox affiliates have been linked. Uh, yeah, yeah. If you if you go on our um, media page, uh, love in it's love in the news on our love is the answer movement dot com, you'll see um, Savannah, Georgia, and a couple other places where there's uh, in interviews that we've posted that were done by Fox. Okay, that's super. That's it's always helpful to encourage somebody to participate if they know that other people in their role yeah. uh, are active and, and supportive. So absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. It's hard to get people to be first, but it's easy to get people to be to follow. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um, all right. So I've got one last thing on the agenda, number 11, which is um, uh, just a timeline uh, reminder. Our goal is to get 20 teams committed by uh, by July 23rd, which is a week from today. There's a lot of irons in the fire. So again, as I mentioned, I'm going to be spending six, seven hours a day talking to people um, the next week and along with everyone else, uh, everyone else's uh, activities, hopefully we'll hit that 20 number as teams committed. Uh, and then we want to get to 40 the uh, the, the 6th of August, and then 60 by the 13th of August. And that should get us covered for all of the United States, at least some of the territories, and, uh, and hopefully one on each continent. And then uh, after that, we want to get all the locations and permits confirmed by the 27th of August. And then we hit the home stretch of the final planning preparation for the day. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Oh, you're, you're muted, Pat. I muted because my phone was ringing. Lois, okay. are, are there permitting issues for uh, the murals? Uh, we would have to work on that. And I ran into, do you know Nancy Margolis? Uh, I've met, but I don't know her really. Yeah. Okay. She and I had a meeting um, at Cultivate. I think it was on, um, oh gosh, the days of, of this week have all run together. Anyway, one morning this week. And... Um, we ran in also into Jennifer Goulet, who happens to be the uh, chair of our arts commission. And so uh, one of the things I know that we will need to do is go through the arts commission. We have to get um, their, uh, their approval on painting anything. Uh, Jennifer is very artistic. She was once the the chair of the DDA in the city of Ypsilanti and brought in some very uh, innovative ideas. So um, I need to, I'm planning to reach out to her today to set up a time and I will get with you and see if you can meet with us because it has to go. And if we get Jennifer on board, we've got the art commission on board. Also, there is an art teacher, a retired art teacher from Ypsilanti Public Schools, Lynn oh. Settles, who is on the art commission. And if we get Lynn, Lynn, um, I think, was Lynn there when the kids did the art to go to Washington? I think she reti retired that year. But anyway, um, Lynn would be also excellent to have on board and um, we have to get, particularly if we want um, Michigan Ave, we have to get permission from the state to close it down. Ah. So we, uh, I will begin to, um, once I meet with uh, uh, Jennifer and you and others and get everybody on board and someone from Growing Hope for the garden, then we can, I will apply for, get Wendy started on the, uh, the shutdown permission for, um, for Michigan Ave. And let's just hope that the work on Cross Street is done by then. 
because we have <laughs> trucks that come through the city and there's no place for them to go if Cross Street is closed down too. So that a lot of whether or not it's going to be on Michigan is going to depend upon um, that. Yeah. Uh, is there any question about like the historic preservation group? Uh, if Shouldn't we're doing build, building walls or? I don't know. We'll see. That's what we would have to plan. I wasn't necessarily thinking on us doing it on, you know, building walls or uh, if we are on any of the buildings that have been deemed historic, we will have to go by that commission. <laughs> yeah. What what kind of uh, what were you thinking in terms of the the actual mural itself physically? You know what I have before even thinking about this or knowing this day was coming or anything, I had just thought of it on the street, you know, actually on the, on the pavement, oh, pavement. but okay. you know, um, we would, you know, maybe need to rethink that. I'm not exactly sure, Pat, you're taking me beyond where I am. Okay. <laughs> yeah. It, it just is percolating. <laughs> I know. And it's something that should, and it, I'm thinking about, it's back here, but it's just been so many things that are right here too, you know, so, uh, and with the thought that always, with the thought that it would be on the street, but uh, hopefully we can meet with Jennifer early, early next week. Okay. What, AJ, what, what have other communities done uh, if they've done something like this before? Well, this is the first year for a mural uh, okay. painting. Yeah, this is the third year for the event, but uh, the first year of us doing something like this. So we, we're breaking new ground. Um, you know, we, we don't know, uh, you know, we, we don't have anything to draw from, right, from, from, from past uh, events. I'm wondering if it's on the street, um, is it, uh, is it going to wear out quicker? Like three months from now, is it going to be, you know, gone because of tire tracks and grease and stuff like that? I, I don't know. I, I, what do I you don't think? know if it's painted and coated. I don't know how long, you know, I don't know how long it would last on the street. But see, I was thinking about doing it on the street long before you presented this to me, you know, oh, back okay. when I saw Black Lives Matter's Paint it. Well, I told you and yeah, yeah, remember yeah, I told yeah. you and Nat way back last year, I wanted to get it put on the street. Yeah. Yes. When I first became yeah. mayor before the Black Lives Matter murals yeah. were painted on the street. So, but you know, okay. but it all, I, I've learned that everything has its timing. And I think this is now the timing for it so yes. that it does become, because it, this is much more involved than what I was thinking of. Okay. okay. What because I was what, thinking of black I, letters and whatnot. If, if okay if the the frame were was the side of the building, what about the prospect of having a uh, uh, wallboard or something such as that fixed to the side of the building? so that it could be painted, but it wouldn't deface the building proper. And then maybe as time went on, pieces of that could be taken off and framed and either sold or they are works of art. Maybe they become a part of the community art history. Uh, I, again, just- Save all it. of those ideas for when yeah. we meet with Jennifer. <laughs> okay. Yeah. That was a cool <laughs> idea. J Jennifer's the artist, yeah, and she's, <laughs> she's the artist and she's, you know, quite adept at this whole, you know, that whole kind of thing. Oh, yeah. that's super lost. Uh -huh. Yeah. <laughs> so it's, um, it's good that we do these because ideas always come up and, and um, you know, Lois, with uh, you bringing up the Arts Commission and a retired art teacher those are two things that spark thought, right? So um, art commissions in different cities, I think we need to reach out to them. Yes. Um, yeah, because they could be the conduit to get to 
everything yes. we need. Get yes. it done, right? Yes, yes. Cool. Yes. Yes. I don't know uh, anybody there, but when you said that, um, the DIA popped in my mind, the Detroit Institute of Art. Oh, are they? Harvey, they, do you know anybody there? No, and I haven't been a member for a while, but that sure does raise the whole question about connecting with the Detroit infrastructure uh, because uh, I know that Mayor Duggan, uh, whom I don't know personally, used to be the head of uh, Detroit Medical Center. And a lot of the medical centers have art displays within the buildings. Uh, certainly U of M hospital system does. Um, hmm. I'm wondering if there isn't an arts commission group in Detroit too. Oh, I'm sure there is. There's got to be. Yeah. Well, wow. what um, this thought just just dropped to. Um, what about is it would this, would we have time? Would school be in in time to have a an art contest for students? Ooh, that'll be not not. I mean, I'm talking about elementary through high school. It would be tight from a, the standpoint that the term would just be beginning. Right. Uh, generally, especially with the younger grades, uh, I'm not an elementary teacher, but don't they require a certain amount of preparation and build up to be able to achieve a product? Um, yeah, they, they like a lot of red tape. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's... Yeah. <laughs> let um, me let me not when you know the superintendent let me see if i can right. uh <laughs> if let me see if nat and i can get to dr zachary ross <laughs> yeah. okay all right cool that's, that's perfect. a bet okay susan uh got any got any you're being quiet you got any any thoughts about any of this or harvey susan you good Oh, just listening today. Okay. <laughs> I noticed she was being very, very quiet. Yeah. <laughs> I'm generally more of a listener than a talker anyway. Okay. Trey, we haven't heard from you. I haven't heard from you since I've been on here. Yeah, he's he's multitasking. Oh, okay. <laughs> and he's muted. <laughs> yes, he's muted and <laughs> Yes. And no video. So, so um, this has been really thought provoking. A lot of great ideas have, have come out. Um, some some new angles, right? Art commissions and uh, other things. Um, so, Lois, you mentioned the black owned TV station. I'm going to reach out today to uh, someone who, well, Joel Freeman, who's the publisher of Black History 365. The um, textbook that that Love Is the Answer has been fortunate to have seven pages in their sixteen hundred oh, okay. page textbook, and Joel knows um, he knows uh, someone who's on his advisory board um, who owns uh, radio and television stations, and ah. so I'm going to track that down today and see if we can have a conversation uh, with Kathy Hughes. Um, I know her is, name. I know her name. Yeah. Uh, probably from listening to um, when we had Black Radio here in um, in the area. Um, they sold the Black Radio station WCHB. They sold it last year or year before last. So, uh, okay. but I, I I know her name. I think I've heard even. Um, oh gosh. Reverend Al talking about Kathy Hughes. Okay. Yeah, yeah so if she, you can get her, good. Yeah, I'm gonna give that a shot. Radio One and TV One are- Right, are okay. Companies. Yeah. All right, and uh, like I said, I do know the, um, the name of the person that did my interview. And I sat and talked to the owner. I just don't remember, recall his name uh, here in um, Highland Park. 
But if you want, I can always get you, I can get it for you. That'd be great. Okay. Yeah. All right. Great. Yeah. All right. All right. Well, we got four minutes left. And uh, one thing I want to always do with these is end on time to be respectful of your time. And um, just so any closing thoughts as we wrap up? Well, I think it's been terrifically creative today. A lot of ideas percolating and uh, we've got a lot of work to do this week to be able to make connections, but uh, it's all promising. It's all very promising. Yes, indeed. Yes, indeed. Thank you. And thank you everybody for uh, being here. And uh, for those of you who will tune in later, thank you as well. Uh, a reminder, go to loveistheanswermovement.com for all the details about not only Love is the Answer Day, but about licensing the film, about getting the Love is the Answer book, uh, about other programs that we're doing like Love Gardens, where we're uh, getting uh, uh, love gardens created uh, in different places. Um, and just join the movement. Just be part of this thing and let's grow it and let's help people. Yeah. Uh, learn how to love themselves and others everywhere around the world. Thank you. All right. And we will talk about the um, making the Trinidad connection. That sounds great. Okay. Yeah. So just yeah. let me know when, you know, bye, okay. Trey. I see your hand up there. Are you waving bye or are you? <laughs> 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 you know what? Uh, He's a millennial, a true millennial. <laughs> yes, yes. <laughs> Love you, Trey. <laughs> uh, he knows I love him. Uh, okay. <laughs> all right, everybody. Thank all right, you. Thank bye you so now. much. Have bye. a great weekend. Bye. <laughs> oh, bye. Bye-bye.